The Bible is a collection of religious texts or scriptures sacred in Christianity, Judaism, Samaritanism, and many other faiths. It appears in the form of an anthology, a compilation of texts of a variety of forms, originally written in Hebrew, Aramaic, and Koine Greek. These texts include theologically focused narratives, hymns, prayers, proverbs, parables, didactic letters, admonitions, poetry, and prophecies. The collection of materials that are accepted as part of the Bible by a particular religious tradition or community is called a biblical canon. Believers generally consider the Bible to be a product of divine inspiration while understanding what that means in different ways. The origins of the oldest writings of the Israelites are lost in antiquity. The Dead Sea Scrolls are dated, approximately, from 250 BC to 100 CE, and they are the oldest existing copies of the books of the Hebrew Bible of any length. Tanakh is an alternate term for the Hebrew Bible composed of the first letters of the three parts of the Hebrew Scriptures, the Torah, the Nevi'im and the Ketuvim. The Torah is also known as the Pentateuch. There is no scholarly consensus as to when the Jewish Hebrew Bible canon was settled in its present form. Some scholars argue that it was fixed by the Hasmonean dynasty, while others argue it was not fixed until the 2nd century CE or even later. The Masoretic text, in Hebrew and Aramaic, is considered the authoritative text by Rabbinic Judaism, but there is also the Septuagint, a Koine Greek translation from the 3rd and 2nd centuries BC, which largely overlaps with the Hebrew Bible. Christianity began as an outgrowth of Judaism, using the Septuagint as the basis of the Old Testament. The early Church continued the Jewish tradition of writing and incorporating what it saw as inspired, authoritative religious books, and soon the Gospels, Pauline epistles and other texts coalesced into the New Testament. In its first three centuries AD, the concept of a closed canon emerged in response to heretical writings in the second century. A first list of canonical books appears in Athanasius' Easter letter from 367 AD. The list of books included in the Catholic Bible was established as the Biblical Canon by the Council of Rome in 382, followed by that of Hippo in 393 and Carthage in 397. Christian Biblical Canons include the Catholic Church Canon, the Canon of most Protestant denominations, the Ethiopian Orthodox Tahado Church Canon, among others. With estimated total sales of over 5 billion copies, the Bible is widely considered to be the best-selling book of all time. It has had a profound direct influence on Western culture and history. The study of the Bible through biblical criticism, has indirectly impacted culture and history as well. The Bible is currently translated or being translated into about half of the world's languages. Chapter 1 Etymology. The English word Bible is derived from Koine Greek, Tau Alpha Beta Iota Beta Lambda Iota Alpha, Romanized, Ta Biblia, meaning the books. The word Beta Iota Beta Lambda Iota Omicron knew itself had the literal meaning of scroll and came to be used as the ordinary word for book. It is the diminutive of Beta Upsilon Beta Lambda Omicron Sigma Biblos, Egyptian papyrus, possibly so called from the name of the Phoenician seaport Byblos from whence Egyptian papyrus was exported to Greece. The term Bible can have several meanings. The religious texts known as the Tanakh, the Torah, the Nevi'im, and the Ketuvim. The Septuagint, an ancient Koine Greek translation of the Tanakh and additional materials. The definitive Masoretic text of the Tanakh, called the Hebrew Bible. A Christian Bible, containing both the Old and New Testaments. The Greek ta Biblia, was an expression Hellenistic Jews used, to describe their sacred books. The biblical scholar F. F. Bruce notes that Chrysostom appears to be the first writer to use the Greek phrase ta Biblia to describe both the Old and New Testaments together. Latin Biblia Sacra Holy Books translates Greek tau alpha beta iota beta lambda iota alpha tau alpha alpha gamma iota alpha. Medieval Latin Biblia is short for Biblia Sacra Holy Book. It gradually came to be regarded as a feminine singular noun in Medieval Latin, 
and so the word was loaned as singular into the vernaculars of Western Europe. Christians now commonly call the Old and New Testaments of the Christian Bible the Holy Bible or the Holy Scriptures. Chapter 2 Development The Bible is not a single book, but a collection of books, whose complex development is not completely understood. The books began as songs and stories orally transmitted from generation to generation before being written down. The Bible was written and compiled by many people from a variety of disparate cultures, some of whom are unknown. British biblical scholar John K. Riches wrote. He biblical texts were produced over a period in which the living conditions of the writers, political, cultural, economic, and ecological, varied enormously. There are texts which reflect a nomadic existence, texts from people with an established monarchy and temple cult, texts from exile, texts born out of fierce oppression by foreign rulers, courtly texts, texts from wandering charismatic preachers, texts from those who give themselves the airs of sophisticated Hellenistic writers. It is a time span which encompasses the compositions of Homer, Plato, Aristotle, Thucydides, Sophocles, Caesar, Cicero, and Catullus. It is a period which sees the rise and fall of the Assyrian Empire and of the Persian Empire, Alexander's campaigns, the rise of Rome and its domination of the Mediterranean, the destruction of the Jerusalem Temple, and the extension of Roman rule to parts of Scotland. Considered to be scriptures, the books were compiled by different religious communities into various biblical canons. The earliest compilation, containing the first five books of the Bible and called the Torah or Pentateuch, was accepted as Jewish canon by the 5th century BCE. A second collection of narrative histories and prophecies, called the Nevi'im, was canonized in the 3rd century BCE. A third collection called the Ketuvim, containing Psalms, Proverbs, and narrative histories, was canonized sometime between the 2nd century BCE and the 2nd century CE. These three collections were written mostly in Biblical Hebrew, with some parts in Aramaic, which together form the Hebrew Bible or Tanakh. The transmission history of the Tanakh spans approximately 3,000 years. Greek speaking Jews in Alexandria, and elsewhere in the Jewish diaspora considered additional scriptures, composed between 200 BC and 100 CE and not included in the Hebrew Bible, to be canon. These additional texts were included in a translation of the Hebrew scriptures into Koine Greek known as the Septuagint which began as a translation of the Torah made around 250 BCE and continued to develop for several centuries. The Septuagint contained all of the books now in the Hebrew Bible, reorganized and with some textual differences, with additional scriptures interspersed throughout. The Masoretes began developing the authoritative Hebrew, an Aramaic text of the 24 books of the Hebrew Bible in Rabbinic Judaism near the end of the Talmudic period, but the actual date is difficult to determine. In the 6th and 7th centuries, three Jewish communities contributed systems for writing the precise letter text, with its vocalization and accentuation known as the Masera. In the 7th century, the first codex form was produced, and in 1488, the first complete printed press version of the Hebrew Bible was produced. During the rise of Christianity in the first century CE, new scriptures were written in Koine Greek about the life and teachings of Jesus, who Christians believed was the Messiah prophesied in the Hebrew scriptures. Two collections of these new scriptures, the Pauline Epistles and the Gospels, were accepted as canon by the end of the second century CE. A third collection, the Catholic epistles, were canonized over the next few centuries. Christians called these new scriptures the New Testament, and began referring to the Septuagint as the Old Testament. Between 385 and 405 CE, the early Christian church translated its canon into Vulgar Latin, a translation known as the Vulgate, which included in its Old Testament the books that were in the Septuagint but not in the Hebrew Bible. The Vulgate introduced stability to the Bible, but also began the East-West Schism between Latin-speaking Western Christianity, and multilingual Eastern Christianity. Christian denominations' biblical canons varied not only in the language of the books, but also in their selection, organization, 
and text. A number of biblical canons have evolved, with overlapping and diverging contents from denomination to denomination. Christians have held ecumenical councils to standardize their biblical canon since the 4th century CE. The Council of Trent, held by the Catholic Church in response to the Protestant Reformation, authorized the Vulgate, as its official Latin translation of the Bible. The Church deemed the additional books in its Old Testament that were interspersed among the Hebrew Bible books to be deuterocanonical. Protestant Bibles either separated these books into a separate section called the Apocrypha between the Old and New Testaments, or omitted them altogether. The 17th-century Protestant King James Version was the most ubiquitous English Bible of all time, but it has largely been superseded by modern translations. Perspectives on the Bible, and its authority vary among world religions. The Rastafari view the Bible as essential to their religion, while the Unitarian Universalists view it as one of many important religious texts. Muslims view the Bible as reflecting the true unfolding revelation from God but revelation which had been corrupted or distorted, that necessitated correction by giving the Quran to the Islamic prophet Muhammad. The Bible is one of the world's most published books, with estimated total sales of over 5 billion copies. As such, the Bible has had a profound influence on literature and history, especially in the Western world, where the Gutenberg Bible was the first book printed using movable type. According to the March 2007 edition of Time, the Bible has done more to shape literature, history, entertainment, and culture than any book ever written. Its influence on world history is unparalleled, and shows no signs of abating. John Riches, Professor of Divinity and Biblical Criticism at the University of Glasgow, provides the following view of the diverse historical influences of the Bible. It has inspired some of the great monuments of human thought, literature, and art, it has equally fueled some of the worst excesses of human savagery, self-interest, and narrow-mindedness. It has inspired men and women to acts of great service and courage, to fight for liberation and human development, and it has provided the ideological fuel for societies which have enslaved their fellow human beings and reduced them to abject poverty, it has, perhaps above all, provided a source of religious and moral norms which have enabled communities to hold together, to care for, and to protect one another, yet precisely this strong sense of belonging has in turn fueled ethnic, racial, and international tension and conflict. Chapter 3, Textual History The books of the Bible were written and copied by hand, initially on papyrus scrolls. No originals survive, and the oldest currently existing scrolls are those discovered in the caves of Qumran in 1947. These scrolls date between 250 BCE and 100 CE and are the oldest existing copies of the books of the Hebrew Bible of any considerable length. The earliest manuscripts were probably written in Paleo-Hebrew, a kind of cuneiform pictograph similar to other pictographs of the same period. The exile to Babylon most likely prompted the shift to square script in the 5th to 3rd centuries BCE. From the time of the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Hebrew Bible was written with spaces between words to aid in reading. By the 8th century CE, the Masoretes added vowel signs. Levites or scribes maintained the texts, and some texts were always treated as more authoritative than others. Scribes preserved and changed the texts by changing the script and updating archaic forms while also making corrections. These Hebrew texts were copied with great care. The textual history of New Testament texts is quite different. The Hebrew Bible is three times the length of the New Testament and was composed over a long period of time, at least a thousand years, and possibly three thousand. In contrast, Copies of the Gospels and Paul's letters were probably made very soon after the originals were written, some probably within 50 to 100 years, as there is evidence in the early Church Fathers' writings and the Didache that copies were in circulation before the end of the first century. Most of these early copies were not made by trained scribes. James R. Royce explains that the story of the manuscript tradition of the New Testament is the story of progression from a relatively uncontrolled tradition to a rigorously controlled tradition. 
The New Testament has been preserved in more manuscripts than any other ancient work, but this only increases the difficulties associated with its textual history, 117 only a half dozen papyrus manuscripts of the New Testament were known and edited before the 20th century, but the discovery of the Oxyrhynchus papyri in Egypt provided 54 of the current 127 NT papyri representing 124 manuscripts as well as 12 majuscules. Their dates run from the beginning of the 2nd century to the 8th century, constituting just over 2% of all Greek NT manuscripts, with 62 dating to the late 3rd and early 4th centuries. Chester Beatty and Bordmer added eight more to the elite group of early papyri. The Book of Revelation has its own textual history and is found in only about 300 manuscripts. Existing New Testament manuscripts also include about 300 Great Unseal Codices, which are vellum or parchment books written in block Greek letters, mostly dating between the 3rd and 9th centuries CE, and about 2,900 minuscules, written in a cursive style that superseded Uncial's beginning in the 9th century. These manuscripts differ in varying degrees from one another and are grouped according to their similarities into textual families or lineages, the four most commonly recognized are Alexandrian, Western, Caesarian, and Byzantine. The Qumran scrolls attest to different biblical text types. In addition to the Qumran scrolls, there are three major manuscript witnesses of the Hebrew Bible, the Septuagint, the Masoretic Text, and the Samaritan Pentateuch. Existing complete copies of the Septuagint, a translation of the Hebrew Bible into Greek, date from the 3rd to the 5th century CE, with fragments dating back to the 2nd century BCE. The Masoretic text is a standardized version of the Hebrew Bible that began to be developed in the 1st century CE and has been maintained by the Masoretes since the latter half of the 1st millennium CE. Its oldest complete copy in existence is the Leningrad Codex, dating to circa 1000 CE. The Samaritan Pentateuch is a version of the Torah maintained by the Samaritan community since antiquity and rediscovered by European scholars in the 17th century, the oldest existing copies date to circa 1100 C. All biblical texts were treated with reverence and care by those that copied them, yet there are transmission errors, called variants, in all biblical manuscripts. A variant is simply any deviation between two texts. Textual critic Daniel B. Wallace explains that each deviation counts as one variant, regardless of how many MSS attest to it. Hebrew scholar Immanuel Tov says the term is not evaluative, it is simply a recognition that the paths of development of different texts have separated. Differences in the Hebrew Bible include memory differences, lexical equivalents, semantic and grammar differences, shifts in order, and some intentional changes for updating doctrine. The majority of variants are accidental, such as spelling errors, but some were intentional. Intentional changes in New Testament texts were made to improve grammar, eliminate discrepancies, harmonize parallel passages, combine and simplify multiple variant readings into one, and for theological reasons. Bruce K. Waltke observes that one variant for every ten words was noted in the recent critical edition of the Hebrew Bible, the Biblia Hebraica Stuttgartensia, leaving 90% of the Hebrew text without variation. The fourth edition of the United Bible Society's Greek New Testament notes variants affecting about 500 out of 6,900 words, or about 7% of the text. Nearly all modern English translations of the Old Testament are based on a single manuscript, the Leningrad Codex, also called the St. Petersburg Codex, copied in 1008 or 1009. It is a complete example of the Masoretic text, and its published edition is used by the majority of scholars. The Aleppo Codex is the basis of the Hebrew University Bible Project in Jerusalem. Copied about 925 CE, part of it was lost, so it must rely on additional manuscripts, and as a result, the Aleppo Codex contains the most comprehensive collection of variant readings. Chapter 4, Hebrew Bible the name Tanakh reflects the threefold division of the Hebrew Scriptures, Torah, Nevi'im and Ketuvim. The Tanakh was mainly written in Biblical Hebrew, with some small portions written in Biblical Aramaic, 
a language which had become the lingua franca for much of the Semitic world. Chapter 4 Section 1, Torah The Torah is also known as the Five Books of Moses or the Pentateuch, meaning five scroll cases. Traditionally these books were considered to have been written almost entirely by Moses himself. Since the 17th century, scholars have viewed the original sources as being the product of multiple anonymous authors while also allowing the possibility of Moses being the one who first assembled the separate sources. There are a variety of hypotheses regarding when and how the Torah was composed, but there is a general consensus that it took its final form during the reign of the Persian Achaemenid Empire, or perhaps in the early Hellenistic period. The Hebrew names of the books are derived from the first words in the respective texts. The Torah consists of the following five books. Genesis, Bereshith. Exodus, Shemot. Leviticus, Vayikra. Numbers, Bamidbar. Deuteronomy, Devarim The first eleven chapters of Genesis provide accounts of the creation of the world and the history of God's early relationship with humanity. The remaining thirty-nine chapters of Genesis provide an account of God's covenant with the biblical patriarchs Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and Jacob's children, the children of Israel, especially Joseph. It tells of how God commanded Abraham to leave his family and home in the city of Ur, eventually to settle in the land of Canaan, and how the children of Israel later moved to Egypt. The remaining four books of the Torah tell the story of Moses, who lived hundreds of years after the patriarchs. He leads the children of Israel from slavery in ancient Egypt, to the renewal of their covenant with God at Mount Sinai and their wanderings in the desert until a new generation was ready to enter the land of Canaan. The Torah ends with the death of Moses. The commandments in the Torah provide the basis for Jewish religious law. Tradition states that there are 613 commandments. Chapter 4, Section 2, Nevi'im. Nevi'im is the second main division of the Tanakh, between the Torah and Ketuvim. It contains two subgroups, the former prophets and the latter prophets. The Nevi'im tell a story of the rise of the Hebrew monarchy and its division into two kingdoms, the Kingdom of Israel and the Kingdom of Judah, focusing on conflicts between the Israelites and other nations, and conflicts among Israelites, specifically, struggles between believers in the Lord God and believers in foreign gods, and the criticism of unethical and unjust behavior of Israelite elites and rulers, in which prophets played a crucial and leading role. It ends with the conquest of the Kingdom of Israel by the Neo-Assyrian Empire, followed by the conquest of the Kingdom of Judah by the Neo-Babylonian Empire and the destruction of the Temple in Jerusalem. Chapter 4 Section 2 Subsection 2 Former Prophets The former prophets are the books Joshua, Judges, Samuel, and Kings. They contain narratives that begin immediately after the death of Moses with the divine appointment of Joshua as his successor, who then leads the people of Israel into the Promised Land, and end with the release from imprisonment of the last king of Judah. Treating Samuel, and kings as single books, they cover. Joshua's Conquest of the Land of Canaan The Struggle of the People to Possess the Land the people's request to God to give them a king so that they can occupy the land in the face of their enemies. The possession of the land under the divinely appointed kings of the house of David, ending in conquest and foreign exile. Chapter 4 Section 2 Subsection 3 Latter Prophets The latter prophets are Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel and the twelve minor prophets, counted as a single book. Hosea, Hoshea, Joel, Uel. Amos, Amos. Obadiah, Ovadia. Jonah, Yonah. Micah, Miha. Nahum, Nahum. Habakkuk, Havakuk. Zephaniah, Zephania. Haggai, Kage. Zechariah, Zekiah. Malachi, Malachi. Chapter 4 Section 3, Ketuvim Ketuvim or Ketuvim is the third and final section of the Tanakh. The Ketuvim are believed 
to have been written under the Ruach HaKodesh but with one level less authority than that of prophecy. In Masoretic manuscripts, Psalms, Proverbs and Job are presented in a special two-column form emphasizing the parallel stikes in the verses, which are a function of their poetry. Collectively, these three books are known as Sifrei Emmet. These three books are also the only ones in Tanakh with a special system of cantillation notes that are designed to emphasize parallel stikes within verses. However, the beginning and end of the book of Job are in the normal prose system. Chapter 4 Section 3 Subsection 2 The Five Scrolls The five relatively short books of Song of Songs, Book of Ruth, the Book of Lamentations, Ecclesiastes and Book of Esther are collectively known as the Hamesh Megillot. These are the latest books collected and designated as authoritative in the Jewish canon even though they were not complete until the 2nd century CE. Chapter 4 Section 3 Subsection 3 Other Books Besides the three books and the five scrolls, the remaining books in Ketuvim are Daniel, Ezra Nehemiah and Chronicles. Although there is no formal grouping for these books in the Jewish tradition, they nevertheless share a number of distinguishing characteristics. Their narratives all openly describe relatively late events. The Talmudic tradition ascribes late authorship to all of them. Two of them are the only books in the Tanakh with significant portions in Aramaic. Chapter 4 Section 3 Subsection 4 Book Order the following list presents the books of Ketuvim in the order they appear in most printed editions. Tehilim Mishlei Eob Shir Hashirim or Ruth Achar Koheleth Esther Daniel Ezra Divrei HaYemim The Jewish textual tradition never finalized the order of the books in Ketuvim. The Babylonian Talmud gives their order as Ruth, Psalms, Job, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Lamentations of Jeremiah, Daniel, Scroll of Esther, Ezra, Chronicles. In Tiberian Masoretic Codices, including the Aleppo Codex and the Leningrad Codex, and often in old Spanish manuscripts as well. The order is Chronicles, Psalms, Job, Proverbs, Ruth, Song of Solomon, Ecclesiastes, Lamentations of Jeremiah, Esther, Daniel. Ezra. The Ketuvim is the last of the three portions of the Tanakh to have been accepted as canonical. While the Torah may have been considered canon by Israel as early as the 5th century BCE and the former and latter prophets were canonized by the 2nd century BCE, the Ketuvim was not a fixed canon until the second century of the Common Era. Evidence suggests, however, that the people of Israel were adding what would become the Ketuvim to their holy literature shortly after the canonization of the prophets. As early as 132 BCE references suggest that the Ketuvim was starting to take shape, although it lacked a formal title. References in the four Gospels as well as other books of the New Testament indicate that many of these texts were both commonly known and counted as having some degree of religious authority early in the first century CE. Many scholars believe that the limits of the Ketuvim as canonized scripture were determined by the Council of Yomnia circa 90 CE. Against Oppian, the writing of Josephus in 95 CE, treated the text of the Hebrew Bible as a closed canon to which, no one has ventured either to add, or to remove, or to alter a syllable. For a long time following this date the divine inspiration of Esther, the Song of Songs, and Ecclesiastes was often under scrutiny. Chapter 4 Section 4, Masoretic Text The Masoretic Text is the authoritative Hebrew text of the Hebrew Bible. It defines the books of the Jewish canon, and also the precise letter text of these biblical books, with their vocalization and accentuation. The oldest extant manuscripts of the Masoretic text date from approximately the 9th century CE, and the Aleppo Codex dates from the 10th century. The term Keta originally referred to this particular manuscript. Over the years, the term Keta came to refer to any full text of the Hebrew Bible, or significant portion of it, bound as a codex and including vowel points, cantillation marks, and Masoretic notes. Medieval handwritten manuscripts were considered extremely precise, 
the most authoritative documents from which to copy other texts. Even so, David Carr asserts that Hebrew texts contain both accidental and intentional types of variants, which are differences in the manuscripts, memory variants are generally accidental differences evidenced by such things as the shift in word order found in 1 Chronicles, 17.24 and 2 Samuel 10.9 and 13. Variants also include the substitution of lexical equivalents, semantic and grammar differences, and larger scale shifts in order, with some major revisions of the Masoretic texts that must have been intentional. Chapter 5, Samaritan Pentateuch Samaritans include only the Pentateuch in their biblical canon. They do not recognize divine authorship or inspiration in any other book in the Jewish Tanakh. A Samaritan book of Joshua partly based upon the Tanakh's book of Joshua exists, but Samaritans regard it as a non-canonical secular historical chronicle. Chapter 6, Septuagint The Septuagint, or the Seventy, is a translation of the Hebrew scriptures and some related texts into Koine Greek, begun in the late 3rd century BCE and completed by 132 BCE, initially in Alexandria, but in time it was completed elsewhere as well. It is not altogether clear which was translated when, or where, some may even have been translated twice, into different versions, and then revised dot as the work of translation progressed, the canon of the Septuagint expanded. The Torah always maintained its preeminence as the basis of the canon but the collection of prophetic writings, based on the Nevi'im, had various hagiographical works incorporated into it. In addition, some newer books were included in the Septuagint, among these are the books of the Maccabees and the Wisdom of Sirach. However, the Book of Sirach is now known to have existed in a Hebrew version, since ancient Hebrew manuscripts of it were rediscovered in modern times. The Septuagint version of some biblical books, like the Book of Daniel and Book of Esther, are longer than those in the Jewish canon. Since late antiquity, once attributed to a hypothetical late 1st century Council of Yomnia, mainstream Rabbinic Judaism rejected the Septuagint as valid Jewish scriptural texts. Several reasons have been given for this. First, some mistranslations were claimed. Second, the Hebrew source texts used for the Septuagint differed from the Masoretic tradition of Hebrew texts, which was chosen as canonical by the Jewish rabbis. Third, the rabbis wanted to distinguish their tradition from the newly emerging tradition of Christianity. Finally, the rabbis claimed a divine authority for the Hebrew language, in contrast to Aramaic or Greek, even though these languages were the lingua franca of Jews during this period. The Septuagint is the basis for the Old Latin, Slavonic, Syriac, Old Armenian, Old Georgian and Coptic versions of the Christian Old Testament. The Roman Catholic and Eastern Orthodox churches use most of the books of the Septuagint, while Protestant churches usually do not. After the Protestant Reformation, many Protestant Bibles began to follow the Jewish canon and exclude the additional texts, which came to be called apocryphal. The apocrypha are included under a separate heading in the King James Version of the Bible, the basis for the Revised Standard Version. Chapter 6, Section 1 incorporations from Theodotion. The book of Daniel is preserved in the twelve-chapter Masoretic text and in two longer Greek versions, the original Septuagint version, circa 100 BC, and the later Theodotion version from circa 2nd century CE. Both Greek texts contain three additions to Daniel, the prayer of Azariah and song of the three holy children, the story of Susanna and the elders, and the story of Bel and the dragon. Theodotion's translation was so widely copied in the early Christian church that its version of the book of Daniel virtually superseded the Septuagints. Jerome, in his preface to Daniel, records the rejection of the Septuagint version of that book in Christian usage, I, wish to emphasize to the reader the fact that it was not according to the Septuagint version but according to the version of Theodotion himself that the churches publicly read Daniel. Jerome's preface also mentions that the hexapla had notations in it, indicating several major differences in content, between the Theodotian Daniel and the earlier versions in Greek and Hebrew. Theodotian's Daniel is closer to the surviving Hebrew Masoretic text version, 
the text which is the basis for most modern translations. Theodotion's Daniel is also the one embodied in the authorized edition of the Septuagint published by Sixtus V in 1587. Chapter 6, Section 2, Final Form Some texts found in the Septuagint are not present in the Hebrew. These additional books are Tobit, Judith, Wisdom of Solomon, Wisdom of Jesus son of Sirach, Baruch, the Letter of Jeremiah, Additions to Daniel, Additions to Esther, 1 Maccabees, 2 Maccabees, 3 Maccabees, 4 Maccabees, 1 Esdros, Odes, including the Prayer of Manasseh, the Psalms of Solomon, and Psalm 151. Some books that are set apart in the Masoretic text are grouped together. For example, the books of Samuel and the books of Kings are in the Septuagint one book in four parts called Beta Alpha Sigma Iota Lambda Epsilon Iota Omega Nu. In the Septuagint, the books of Chronicles supplement reigns and it is called Paralipomenon. The Septuagint organizes the minor prophets as twelve parts of one book of twelve. Chapter 7, Pseudepigraphal Books Pseudepigrapha are works whose authorship is wrongly attributed. A written work can be pseudepigraphical and not be a forgery, as forgeries are intentionally deceptive. With pseudepigrapha, authorship has simply been mistransmitted for any one of a number of reasons. Apocryphal and pseudepigraphic works are also not the same. Apocrypha includes all the writings claiming to be sacred that are outside the canon, while pseudepigrapha is a literary category of all writings whether they are canonical or apocryphal, for the term pseudepigrapha is commonly used, to describe numerous works of Jewish religious literature written from about 300 BC to 300 CE. Not all of these works are actually pseudepigraphical. The Old Testament pseudepigraphal works include the following. 3 Maccabees 4 Maccabees Assumption of Moses Ethiopic Book of Enoch Slavonic Book of Enoch Hebrew Book of Enoch Book of Jubilees Syriac Apocalypse of Baruch Letter of Aristeus Life of Adam and Eve Martyrdom and Ascension of Isaiah Psalms of Solomon Sibylline Oracles Greek Apocalypse of Baruch Testaments of the Twelve Patriarchs Chapter 7 Section 1, Book of Enoch Notable pseudepigraphal works include the Books of Enoch. These are ancient Jewish religious works, traditionally ascribed to the prophet Enoch, the great-grandfather of the patriarch Noah. They are not part of the biblical canon used by Jews, apart from Beta Israel. Most Christian denominations and traditions may accept the books of Enoch as having some historical or theological interest, or significance. It has been observed that part of the book of Enoch is quoted in the Epistle of Jude but Christian denominations generally regard the books of Enoch as non-canonical or non-inspired. However, the Enoch books are treated as canonical by the Ethiopian Orthodox Tahado Church and Eritrean Orthodox Tahado Church. The older sections are estimated to date from about 300 BCE, and the latest part probably was composed at the end of the 1st century BCE. Chapter 8 Christian Bible A Christian Bible is a set of books divided into the Old and New Testament that a Christian denomination has, at some point in their past or present regarded as divinely inspired scripture. The early church primarily used the Septuagint, as it was written in Greek, the common tongue of the day, or they used the Targums among Aramaic speakers. These, in combination with the Masoretic text, provide the basis for the Old Testament section of the Christian Bible. The Pauline epistles and the Gospels were soon added, along with other writings, as the New Testament. Some denominations have additional canonical texts beyond the Bible, including the standard works of the Latter day Saints movement, and divine principle in the Unification Church. Chapter 8, Section 1 Old Testament The Protestant Old Testament of today has a 39 book canon, 
the number of books varies from the Jewish Tanakh only because of a different method of division, while the Roman Catholic Church recognizes 46 books as the canonical Old Testament. The Eastern Orthodox Churches recognize three Maccabees, one Esdros, Prayer of Manasseh and Psalm 151 in addition to the Catholic canon. Some include, two Esdros. The term Hebrew Scriptures is often used as being synonymous with the Protestant Old Testament, since the surviving scriptures in Hebrew include only those books, while Catholics and Orthodox include additional texts that have not survived in Hebrew. Eighty book Protestant Bibles include fourteen books called Apocrypha in between the Old Testament, and the New Testament that are deemed useful for instruction but non-canonical. Both Catholics and Protestants have the same 27-book New Testament canon. The Old Testament has always been central to the life of the Christian Church. Bible scholar N. T. Wright says Jesus himself was profoundly shaped by the Scriptures. He adds that the earliest Christians also searched those same Hebrew Scriptures in their effort to understand the earthly life of Jesus. They regarded the holy writings of the Israelites as necessary and instructive for the Christian, as seen from Paul's words to Timothy, and as pointing to the Messiah, and as having reached a climactic fulfillment in Jesus himself, generating the new covenant prophesied by Jeremiah. Chapter 8 Section 1 Subsection 2 Deuterocanon and Apocrypha Christian Bibles often include books from the Septuagint that are not found in the Hebrew Bible, although the view of these books and which books are included in these Bibles differs between different denominations. In general it can be said that Roman Catholic and Orthodox churches embrace part of these books as part of the biblical canon, while newer denominations with roots in the Reformation to varying degrees reject those as part of the canon. In Eastern Christianity, translations based on the Septuagint still prevail. The Septuagint was generally abandoned in favor of the 10th century Masoretic text as the basis for translations of the Old Testament into Western languages. Some modern Western translations, since the 14th century, make use of the Septuagint to clarify passages in the Masoretic text, where the Septuagint may preserve a variant reading of the Hebrew text. They also sometimes adopt variants that appear in other texts such as those discovered among the Dead Sea Scrolls. A number of books which are part of the Peshitta or the Septuagint, but are not found in the Hebrew Bible are often referred to as deuterocanonical books by Roman Catholics referring to a later secondary canon, that canon is fixed definitively by the Council of Trent 1545-1563. It includes 46 books for the Old Testament and 27 for the New. 80 book Protestant Bibles have 14 books that are found in the Septuagint and they are placed between the Old Testament and New Testament in a section called the Apocrypha. Protestant traditions traditionally teach that these books are useful for instruction, but are non-canonical. However, Eastern Orthodox churches include these books as part of their Old Testament and the Roman Catholic Church includes most of them in their Old Testament, with the exception of three books dot the Roman Catholic Church recognizes. Tobit Judith 1 Maccabees 2 Maccabees Wisdom Syrac Baruch The Letter of Jeremiah Greek Editions to Esther Greek Editions to Daniel the Prayer of Azariah and Song of the Three Holy Children verses 1 to 68. Susanna. Bell and the Dragon In addition to those, the Greek and Russian Orthodox churches recognize the following. 3 Maccabees. 1 Esdros. Prayer of Manasseh. Psalm 151 Russian and Georgian Orthodox churches include. 2 Esdros i.e. Latin Esdros in the Russian and Georgian Bibles there is also for Maccabees which is only accepted as canonical in the Georgian Church. It is an appendix to the Greek Orthodox Bible, and it is therefore sometimes included in collections of the Apocrypha. The Syriac Orthodox Church includes Psalms 151-155 The Apocalypse of Baruch the letter of Baruch the Ethiopian Orthodox Biblical Canon includes Jubilees Enoch 1-3 Mechabian and some other books. 
the revised common lectionary of the Lutheran Church, Moravian Church, Reformed Churches, Anglican Church and Methodist Church uses the apocryphal books liturgically, with alternative Old Testament readings available. Therefore, editions of the Bible intended for use in the Lutheran Church and Anglican Church include the 14 books of the Apocrypha, many of which are the deuterocanonical books accepted by the Catholic Church, plus 1 Esdros, 2 Esdros and the Prayer of Manasseh, which were in the Vulgate Appendix. Chapter 8 Section 2 New Testament the New Testament is the name given to the second portion of the Christian Bible. The mainstream consensus is that the New Testament was written in a form of Koine Greek, which was the common language of the Eastern Mediterranean from the conquests of Alexander the Great until the evolution of Byzantine Greek. The term New Testament came into use in the second century during a controversy over whether the Hebrew Bible should be included with the Christian writings as sacred scripture. 7. It is generally accepted that the New Testament writers were Jews who took the inspiration of the Old Testament for granted. This is probably stated earliest in 2 Timothy 3:16. all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Scholarship on how and why ancient Jewish Christians came to create and accept new texts as equal to the established Hebrew texts has taken three forms. First, John Barton writes that ancient Christians probably just continued the Jewish tradition of writing and incorporating what they believed were inspired, authoritative religious books, to the second approach separates those various inspired writings based on a concept of canon which developed in the second century, 3 to 8 the third involves formalizing canon, 8 to 11 according to Barton, these differences are only differences in terminology. The ideas are reconciled if they are seen as three stages in the formation of the New Testament, 11, 14 to 19 the first stage was completed remarkably early if one accepts Albert C. Sundberg's view that canon and scripture are separate things with scripture having been recognized by ancient Christians long before canon was, 9 to 11, 17 to 18 Barton says Theodore Zahn concluded there was already a Christian canon by the end of the first century, but this is not the canon of later centuries. 3. Accordingly, Sundberg asserts that in the first centuries, there was no criterion for inclusion in the sacred writings beyond inspiration, and that no one in the first century had the idea of a closed canon. 9 to 11 The Gospels were accepted by early believers as handed down from those apostles who had known Jesus and been taught by him. Later biblical criticism has questioned the authorship and datings of the Gospels. At the end of the second century, it is widely recognized that a Christian canon similar to its modern version was asserted in response to the plethora of writings claiming inspiration that contradicted orthodoxy, what they called heresy. 7 The third stage of development as the final canon occurred in the 4th century with a series of synods that produced a list of texts of the canon of the Old Testament, and the New Testament that are still used today. Most notably the Synod of Hippo in 393 CE, and that of circa 400. Jerome produced a definitive Latin edition of the Bible, the canon of which, at the insistence of the Pope, was in accord with the earlier synods. With the benefit of hindsight, it can be said that this process effectively set the New Testament canon. The New Testament is a collection of 27 books of four different genres of Christian literature. These books can be grouped into The Gospels Synoptic Gospels Gospel of Matthew Gospel of Mark Gospel of Luke Gospel of John Narrative Literature, Account and History of the Apostolic Age Acts of the Apostles Pauline Epistles Pastoral Epistles Catholic Epistles, also called the General Epistles Apocalyptic Literature Book of Revelation or the Apocalypse The New Testament books are ordered differently in the Catholic-slash-Orthodox-slash-Protestant tradition, the Slavonic tradition, the Syriac tradition and the Ethiopian tradition. Chapter 8 Section 3 – Canon Variations Chapter 8 Section 3 – Subsection 2 – Peshitta The Peshitta is the standard version of the Bible for churches in the Syriac tradition. The consensus within biblical scholarship although not universal, is that the Old Testament of the Peshitta was translated into Syriac from Biblical Hebrew, 
probably in the 2nd century AD, and that the New Testament of the Peshitta was translated from the Greek. This New Testament, originally excluding certain disputed books, had become a standard by the early 5th century. The five excluded books were added in the Harclean version of Thomas of Harkle. Chapter 8 Section 3 Subsection 3 Ethiopian Orthodox Canon The canon of the Ethiopian Orthodox Tahado Church is wider than the canons used by most other Christian churches. There are 81 books in the Ethiopian Orthodox Bible. In addition to the books found in the Septuagint accepted by other Orthodox Christians, the Ethiopian Old Testament canon uses Enoch and Jubilees, Greek Ezra and the Apocalypse of Ezra, three books of Maccabean, and Psalm 151 at the end of the Psalter. The three books of Maccabean are not to be confused with the books of Maccabees. The order of the other books is somewhat different from other groups, as well. The Old Testament follows the Septuagint order for the minor prophets rather than the Jewish order. Chapter 9, Biblical Criticism Biblical criticism refers to the analytical investigation of the Bible as a text, and addresses questions such as history, authorship, dates of composition, and authorial intention. It is not the same as criticism of the Bible, which is an assertion against the Bible being a source of information or ethical guidance, nor is it criticism of possible translation errors. In the 17th century, Thomas Hobbes collected textual evidence that he asserted as proving Moses could not have been the author of the first five books of the Bible known as the Pentateuch. Shortly afterwards, the philosopher Baruch Spinoza published a unified critical analysis, arguing that the problematic passages were not isolated cases that could be explained away one by one, but pervasive throughout the five books, concluding that it was clearer than the sun at noon that the Pentateuch was not written by Moses, Gina Struck, a French physician, believed these critics were wrong. He believed that Moses had assembled the first book of the Pentateuch, the book of Genesis, using hereditary accounts passed down through the Hebrew people. Biblical criticism began when a Struk borrowed methods of textual criticism which were already used, to investigate Greek and Roman texts and applied them to the Bible in search of those original accounts. A Struk believed this approach did identify the separate sources that were edited together into the book of Genesis, and modern scholars still, generally, accept his conclusions. In a Struk's view, the existence of separate sources explained the inconsistent style and vocabulary of Genesis, discrepancies in the narrative, differing accounts and chronological difficulties, while still allowing for mosaic authorship. Biblical criticism made study of the Bible secularized, scholarly and more democratic, while it also permanently altered the way people understood the Bible. 22 It is no longer thought of solely as a religious artifact and its interpretation is no longer restricted to the community of believers, 129 There are those who regard the desacralization of the Bible as the fortunate condition for the rise of new sensibilities and modes of imagination that went into developing the modern world, 121 For many, biblical criticism released a host of threats to the Christian faith. For others biblical criticism proved to be a failure, due principally to the assumption that diachronic, Linear research could master any and all of the questions and problems attendant on interpretation. Still others believed that biblical criticism, shorn of its unwarranted arrogance, could be a reliable source of interpretation. Michael Fishbane compares biblical criticism to Job, a prophet who destroyed self-serving visions for the sake of a more honest crossing from the divine textus to the human one, 129 or as Rogerson says, Biblical criticism has been liberating for those who want their faith intelligently grounded and intellectually honest, 298 in the 21st century, attitudes towards the Bible differ among Christian groups. Roman Catholics, High Church Anglicans, Methodists and Eastern Orthodox Christians, stress the harmony and importance of both the Bible and sacred tradition, while many Protestant churches focus on the idea of sola scriptura, or scripture alone. This concept rose to prominence during the Reformation, and many denominations today support the use of the Bible as the only infallible source of Christian teaching. Others, though, advance the concept of prima scriptura in contrast, meaning scripture primarily or scripture mainly. Chapter 10, Divine Inspiration 
The second epistle to Timothy says that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Various related but distinguishable views on divine inspiration include the view of the Bible as the inspired Word of God, the belief that God, through the Holy Spirit, intervened and influenced the words, message, and collation of the Bible. The view that the Bible is also infallible, and incapable of error in matters of faith and practice, but not necessarily in historic or scientific matters. The view that the Bible represents the inerrant Word of God, without error in any aspect, spoken by God and written down in its perfect form by humans within these broad beliefs many schools of hermeneutics operate. Bible scholars claim that discussions about the Bible must be put into its context within church history and then into the context of contemporary culture. Fundamentalist Christians are associated with the doctrine of biblical literalism, where the Bible is not only inerrant, but the meaning of the text is clear to the average reader. Jewish antiquity attests to belief in sacred texts, and a similar belief emerges in the earliest of Christian writings. Various texts of the Bible mention divine agency in relation to its writings. In their book A General Introduction to the Bible, Norman Geisler and William Nix write, The process of inspiration is a mystery of the providence of God, but the result of this process is a verbal, plenary, inerrant, and authoritative record. Most evangelical biblical scholars associate inspiration with only the original text, for example some American Protestants adhere to the 1978 Chicago Statement on Biblical Inerrancy which asserted that inspiration applied only to the autographic text of Scripture. Among adherents of biblical literalism, a minority, such as followers of the King James Only Movement, extend the claim of inerrancy only to a particular version. Chapter 11, Versions and Translations the original texts of the Tanakh were almost entirely written in Hebrew, about 1% is written in Aramaic. In addition to the authoritative Masoretic text, Jews still refer to the Septuagint, the translation of the Hebrew Bible into Greek, and the Targum Onkelos, an Aramaic version of the Bible. There are several different ancient versions of the Tanakh in Hebrew, mostly differing by spelling, and the traditional Jewish version is based on the version known as Aleppo Codex. Even in this version there are words which are traditionally read differently from written, because the oral tradition is considered more fundamental than the written one, and presumably mistakes had been made in copying the text over the generations. The primary biblical text for early Christians was the Septuagint. In addition, they translated the Hebrew Bible into several other languages. Translations were made into Syriac, Coptic, Ethiopic, and Latin, among other languages. The Latin translations were historically the most important for the Church in the West, while the Greek-speaking East continued to use the Septuagint translations of the Old Testament and had no need to translate the New Testament. The earliest Latin translation was the Old Latin text, or Wetus Latina, which, from internal evidence, seems to have been made by several authors over a period of time. It was based on the Septuagint, and thus included books not in the Hebrew Bible. According to the Latin Decretum Gelasianum, thought to be of a 6th century document of uncertain authorship and of pseudepigraphal papal authority but reflecting the views of the Roman Church by that period, the Council of Rome in 382 CE under Pope Damasus I gives a complete list of the canonical books of both the Old Testament, and the New Testament which is identical with the list given at the Council of Trent. Damasus commissioned Jerome to produce a reliable and consistent text by translating the original Greek and Hebrew texts into Latin. This translation became known as the Latin Vulgate Bible, in the 4th century CE. In 1546, at the Council of Trent, Jerome's Vulgate translation was declared by the Roman Catholic Church to be the only authentic and official Bible in the Latin Church. Since the Protestant Reformation, Bible translations for many languages have been made. The Bible continues to be translated to new languages, largely by Christian organizations such as Wycliffe Bible Translators, New Tribes Mission and Bible Societies. 
Laminsone writes that tracing the impact on the local cultures of translating the Bible into local vernacular language shows it has produced the movements of indigenization and cultural liberation. The translated scripture has become the benchmark of awakening and renewal. Chapter 12 Archaeological and Historical Research Biblical archaeology is the archaeology that relates to and sheds light upon the Hebrew scriptures and the Christian Greek scriptures. It is used to help determine the lifestyle and practices of people living in biblical times. There are a wide range of interpretations in the field of biblical archaeology. One broad division includes biblical maximalism which generally takes the view that most of the Old Testament or the Hebrew Bible is based on history although it is presented through the religious viewpoint of its time. It is considered to be the opposite of biblical minimalism which considers the Bible to be a purely post-exilic composition. Even among those scholars who adhere to biblical minimalism, the Bible is a historical document containing first-hand information on the Hellenistic and Roman eras, and there is universal scholarly consensus that the events of the 6th century BCE Babylonian captivity have a basis in history. The historicity of the biblical account of the history of ancient Israel and Judah of the 10th to 7th centuries BCE is disputed in scholarship. The biblical account of the 8th to 7th centuries BCE is widely, but not universally, accepted as historical, while the earliest period of the United Monarchy and the historicity of David has only recently been established, due to archaeological evidence such as the Tel Dan Steel. The biblical account of events of the Exodus from Egypt in the Torah, and the migration to the Promised Land and the period of Judges are generally not considered historical, although this too remains open to further evidence. Chapter 13, Bible Museums The Dunham Bible Museum, is located in Houston, Texas. It is known for its collection of rare Bibles from around the world and for having many different Bibles of various languages. The Museum of the Bible opened in Washington, D.C. in November 2017. The museum states that its intent is to share the historical relevance and significance of the sacred scriptures in a non-sectarian way, but this has been questioned. The Bible Museum in St. Arnaud, Victoria, Australia opened in 2009. As of 2020, it is closed for relocation. There is a Bible Museum at the Great Passion Play in Eureka Springs, Arkansas. The Bible Museum on the Square in Collierville, Tennessee opened in 1997. Pedenhan Museum and Gardens in Monroe, Louisiana includes a Bible Museum. Chapter 14, Gallery Bibles Chapter 15, Illustrations The grandest medieval Bibles were illuminated manuscripts in which the text is supplemented by the addition of decoration, such as decorated initials, borders and miniature illustrations. Up to the 12th century, most manuscripts were produced in monasteries in order to add to the library or after receiving a commission from a wealthy patron. Larger monasteries often contained separate areas for the monks who specialized in the production of manuscripts called a scriptorium, where separate little rooms were assigned to book copying, they were situated in such a way that each scribe had to himself a window open to the cloister walk. By the 14th century, the cloisters of monks writing in the scriptorium started to employ lay brothers from the urban scriptoria, especially in Paris, Rome and the Netherlands. Demand for manuscripts grew to an extent that the monastic libraries were unable to meet with the demand, and began employing secular scribes and illuminators. These individuals often lived close to the monastery and, in certain instances, dressed as monks whenever they entered the monastery, but were allowed to leave at the end of the day. A notable example of an illuminated manuscript is the Book of Kells, produced circa the year 800 containing the four Gospels of the New Testament together with various prefatory texts and tables. The manuscript was sent to the rubricator, who added the titles, headlines, the initials of chapters and sections, the notes and so on, and then, if the book was to be illustrated, it was sent to the illuminator. In the case of manuscripts that were sold commercially, 
The writing would undoubtedly have been discussed initially between the patron and the scribe but by the time that the written gathering was sent off to the illuminator there was no longer any scope for innovation. Bible Illustrations Chapter 15 Section 1, Works Cited